here on the pregame show we like to get to know the players beyond just the uniform number and a helmet this week i sat down with bison senior defensive end brad ambrosius who has aspirations beyond football and a love of the skies he's featured in this week's beyond the game all right brad first off uh you're, you're from wisconsin you come to ndsu your senior year now how did how did coming to ndsu how did playing football for ndsu come about um, well, <laughs> thank Coach Polisek for that one before he left to go to NIU for a little bit and then came back. Um, I never even knew this place existed really in high school. Coming from Green Bay, you know, you don't, you don't hear about North Dakota that much. But um, as soon as I started getting recruited, I started looking into it. And I really enjoyed when I came up here the family atmosphere that came from being an NDSU Bison, that came from the fans, that came from the coaches, and everyone that was here involved. Um, even to this day, as a senior, I'll go around and random people see me at the supermarket and be like, hey, like, nice game, like, it's nice to meet you and stuff. And they're just super nice here, super friendly, which is a big selling point for me. And I really love NDSU and the fact that everyone's a big family here. Uh, you come to NDSU and you pick a major that maybe not a lot of people expect from a guy who's out there, you know, hitting people uh, constantly. You're trying to help people uh, in, in, edu in education. How did, how did choosing an ed education major come out? Well, yeah, uh, a lot of people don't think a big defensive lineman like me would be a big soft teddy bear but um, being a teacher is something that I wanted to do since I was midway through high school. I saw a lot of people in my school that were poor and um, depressed and things of that nature and we had a lot of good teachers at my high school that took them under their wing and took them into special classrooms and special places where they got some treatment and got the help they needed and I have a huge respect for teachers and what they do. And I think they're very undervalued, very very underpaid. They help America's youth when, uh, let's say, a kid doesn't have a father figure, doesn't have a mother figure in their life. And those teachers become role models and father figures and mother figures for them. And that is awesome to me, and that's what I want to do. Uh, the teaching thing, obviously, football is uh, a, a fun thing to do as well. Would you consider, you know, being like a coach as well if you if you got a, a teaching job at high school is what you want to do, right? Yes. Um, oh, yeah. I definitely want to coach. Uh, football and basketball, hopefully. Um, when I was in high school, I did a lot of basketball. I didn't play my senior year because I focused on football, but I, basketball was my number one love coming into high school. So I used to be a scrawny, a six foot five, 190 pound kid my freshman year of high school, but you know, now I blossomed a little bit to 250. So basketball and football coaching is definitely something I want to do with teaching. Did you blossom more when you got here and Coach Kramer got a hold of you? Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Coach Kramer and his eating plan and his strength conditioning plan, yeah, he pushes you to the limit. and. Everything he's done for me is outstanding. I came in, I was a little chunky, but you know he's he's really he's trimmed me down a little bit. I'm still a little chunky, but <laughs> uh, you said you're also really into model airplanes. Where did m model airplanes come about? Correct. Um, when I was little, my mom would always give me Christmas ornaments every year of airplanes, and I'm not sure exactly where it started, but the first memory I have is every Christmas getting these ornaments of model airplanes as gifts. And you know, kids, some kids get Xboxes whenever. But these model airplanes were the greatest things ever. And I love the ornaments. I love just like having hands-on model airplanes to like play with and build upon and had imaginary dreams of being a pilot one day, but you know, it didn't work out. Here at NDSU, I don't have a lot of time to do that stuff because of homework and everything, but yeah, I've, I have a pretty big obsession with airplanes and flying. Uh, that, so is it's like the, the kid in you comes out. I mean, you're still a, a young man, but the kid in you comes out when you see these airplanes? Oh, yeah, especially when we're flying from two away games um, to and from. I get really excited. I love takeoff. I love being in the air. Even Like, we hit turbulence and everyone's freaking out on the plane. I'm just like, this is awesome. This is the greatest <laughs> thing ever. What are you guys freaking out about? But yeah, I love everything to do with airplanes. Okay, we're going to have to ask you to maybe sell somebody out here. Who is the worst <laughs> flyer on the football team? <laughs> Um, I actually, my roommate is Austin Kuhnert, and uh, he hasn't flown much in his life, and usually <laughs> you can see him, we sit next to each other in the plane, you can see him clutching his seat and closing the window, <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to look outside kind of thing, so he, he definitely doesn't like flying very much, him or Jack Flankers, which, I mean, being bigger people, you can <laughs> kind of imagine what goes up must come down kind of theory. <laughs> That's so great. Uh, do you go, do, have you ever been to the Air Museum here? Do you check out the, the airplanes and stuff that they got on here? I have actually. Me and uh, Matt Plank took a, um, history, a public history class in college at NDSU, which uh, we were required to go around to different museums and places like that. So we went to the National Air Museum, and I was pretty astounded with what was in there. Um, uh, you got helicopters from Vietnam in there, which is one of my favorite areas being a history teacher. Um, they also have like wooden 
uh, airplanes that people built in their garages and stuff and it's just crazy to think about what's all in there but yeah it was a really good experience to go there that is so much fun uh, all this stuff outside of, of football that you may never think about with with brad ambrosius who uh you knocked the helmet off of a guy last <laughs> week right can you walk me through that um well uh i hit him and i was aiming right for what well, i was can i always consider the sweet spot which is right in the middle of the chest and his helmet was a little loose to begin with, so I don't know if I actually hit him as hard as everyone thinks, but um, I hit him, I got up, and I actually thought he threw the football or something because I got up, and all of a sudden Greg Menard's right there screaming in my face and giving me headbutts to the head. I'm just like, all right, Greg, that's enough. Come on, calm down. That's fantastic. You guys, I mean, your defense is playing at a high level. You guys are going up against uh, a really tough defense this week. Uh, do you guys get amped up when you see other defenses that are playing at the same level as you guys? Yeah, we do. Um, obviously, football is a competitive sport, and all of us are great competitors. Um, we would always love to be the number one defense in the nation, but, I mean, that's a pretty high statistic to do. So whenever we see another good defense and we're going against them in the game, it's kind of like, well, whoever puts up the best defensive game is going to win this game, obviously. So we try to compete against them, compete against everyone else, and hopefully, you know, we come out with the W.